The Ready to Learn Learning Triangle is a teaching tool. It addresses various learning styles and engages different senses. This workshop is based on these principles, view, read, and do. Today we're going to talk about music and how music is not just fun, but it's also educational. In our last workshop, or in a previous workshop, we talked about nursery rhymes and the value of nursery rhymes. And music falls into the same categories that nursery rhymes do. They teach phonetic awareness, they teach storytelling, they have the same kind of concepts. But today we're going to move away from those and talk a little bit more about how they can be a little bit more educational. Now, I want you to think of your brain if you can think right now, think of your brain and it is divided in two hemispheres. Isn't that interesting? We have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. And one thing interesting about music in our brain is that when we sing or when we dance or when we move, we're using both sides of the brain because one side deals with more of the language and the logic and the meaning where the other side deals more with the creativity and the movement. And so when we sing and we move, we're taking both sides and we're combining those. And so it's almost like brain food for a child, for them to dance and to mu uh, move and to sing. And so one of the things that we do know, research has shown over and over and over again, is that music is very educational, not only for children, but for adults. Just like nursery rhymes, music is very memorable. It helps us learn new things. Once we hear that song, we can put some new words to it and we can learn very quickly. How many of you have sung or was sung Twinkle Twinkle Little Star when you were growing up, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with this group and we're gonna start singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Now, as I move forward, we're gonna move forward a little bit to another song that we learned just a little bit later in life and that's the ABC song. And your group is gonna come in with the ABC song, okay? And we're gonna see how just taking a familiar tune you can learn new words and you can pick up the concept very, very quickly, okay? So here we go. We're gonna sing nice and loud, everyone, so you don't just hear my voice. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V. W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Same tune, okay? Most children that learn Twinkle Twinkle Little Star will be able to learn that ABC song very, very quickly. How many of your kids were singing the ABC song by the time they were two, two and a half, three? Okay, they were probably singing it like my children, A, D, G, K, L, you know, and L, M, N, O, P for a child is one letter, okay? Now I'm gonna ask a question. How, about it, how many of you still sing the alphabet song when you're trying to find those middle letters? I know when I'm standing at them in the mail room looking for somebody's last name, I start singing that song. Singing helps us remember things. Yesterday I was driving up to Salt Lake and all of a sudden this song comes on that I haven't heard for years. And I knew about 90% of the words. Nobody had to tell me them. And my son was like, how do you know this song? I'm like, Oh, I think it's from high school. I mean, that's a long time ago, and I still could remember it. Music is very memorable, and the one thing that we know is that all you need to do is add some new words and use the same tune, and children can pick it up very quickly. And we're gonna talk about how mem music is memorable. Um, most of you in this room probably grew up with Barney. Okay, many of you remember Barney watching that as a young child. And Barney was one of the shows that over and over again would take the same tune and then just insert different words to help. And I remember one time after we have quite a few of those Barney videos and DVDs, my husband said they go to the circus, they go to the zoo, they go to the farm, but it helps children be familiar with that and then they'll be able to pick up those new concepts very quickly. Now, probably 
one of my favorite, I cannot tell you how much I love this book. When I first read it, I just loved it because it takes that familiar tune of the wheels on the bus. And in fact, we're going to do the sills on the bus. Now, I'm not singing by myself, so I need everyone to participate as we sing the sills on the bus. Now, some of you probably have never read this book, sung this book, right? So there's probably a few of you. I'm not even going to tell you what to do because it's so easy. You know the familiar tune. And if you usually say around the town, all around the town, you put in what you grew up with because we sing what we know, okay? But just follow me, look at the animals, and sing along. The sills on the bus go erp, 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 erp. The sills on the bus go erp, erp, erp all through the town. The tigers on the bus go roar, 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 roar. The tigers on the bus go roar, 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 all through the town. The geese on the bus go honk, 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 honk. The geese on the bus go honk, 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 all through the town. The rabbits on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The rabbits on the bus go up and down, all through the town. The monkeys on the bus go ee, 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 ee. The monkeys on the bus go ee, 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 all through the town. The vipers on the bus go hiss, hiss, hiss. The vipers on the bus go hiss, 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 all through the town. The sheep on the bus go ba, 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 ba. The sheep on the bus go ba, 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 all through the town. The skunks on the bus go The skunks on the bus go all through the town. The people on the bus go help, 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 help. The people on the bus go help, 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 all through the town. Very easy, right? Did No one messed up at all. Now, what were so many of the similarities? The tune was the first one that we know, but what were some other similarities to the wheels on the bus? Can you think of any? Okay. The vipers said and hiss instead of the wipers. Can yeah, the vipers, and that's in, they even said in the book, um, oh, snakes, but it was the vipers on the bus. Anything else? That Teresa, did you see anything that were similar? Well, the chorus was still the same. Okay, okay, and the rabbits on the bus were up and down. We did the up and down. Instead of the, the babies going bat, wow, wow, we had the sheep that went ba, ba. There, and you know, it doesn't matter how... Usually a child, you sing this and they can get it right away. In fact, it's just going to be like the wheels on the bus. After you've sung it, read it a couple times, you don't even need the book anymore. And so taking that familiar tune and adding different words, lots of PBS shows do this. I mean, the most famous, once again, is the Barney Sher cleanup song, right? Um, and they just take a tune and put words to it to get kids to actually do things. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to break up into some three groups and I'm going to give you a familiar tune and then I'm going to give you an activity that we like our children to do. And you're going to come up with four lines with that particular tune for the activity that I give you. Now, if you get jingle bells, you can either do the chorus or you can do the verse. So I'm going to hand these out. Okay, here's a good one. Brush your teeth to, oh, that's a hard one. How about row, row, row your boat? Okay, row, row, row your boat. You know that tune? Okay, so you guys are going to get the jingle bells and your activity is going to be cleanup time. That's something that we still have problems at our house with. <laughs> but just have one person write it down. You've got about four minutes to come up with an act, I mean, a song with your activity. And I know you can do it. Okay? Good idea. Oh, perfect idea. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Yeah. 
Our first group was Row, Row, Row Your Boat and Brush Your Teeth. So let's all sing this together. Teresa, will you sort of lead us here? Sure. Brush, brush, brush your teeth every night and day. Clean, clean, clean between the top and bottom rows. Wow, a much better way than get your teeth brushed, that's all. <laughs> okay, this next one is clean up time, which all kids seem to have a little bit of a hard time doing. We had the hard song of Jingle Bells, and here we go. Who, Rachel, are you going to sort of lead us? Okay. okay. Let's think of the tune, Jingle Bells. Okay, here we go. Clean up time, clean up time, pick up all your toys. Let's all help and do our part and be good girls and boys. That's as easy as it has to be. One of my most memorable experiences doing this activity was actually with a girl up at a high school where we taught at a young um, mother's um, high school and um, the girls actually were given an assignment by their teacher to go home and take a familiar tune and write a song for their child. And so as I went back the following month to teach a different workshop, one of the girls came rounding up to me yelling, KBYU lady, KBYU lady, that's what they always called me. And anyway, it was interesting because she said, I wrote a song for my son. And I said, oh, that's neat. She said, I want to sing it to you. I said, oh, okay. And I just continued to walk and she said, right now. Now we're in an alternative high school, lots of kids walking around, and I was very surprised because that group of um, people that I worked with were hard to participate with. Usually I was doing the singing, the dancing, all the things, because it was very, you know, the peers were there, it was very hard. But anyway, that particular day she wanted to sing this song, and she had taken the tune, Twinkle Little, Twinkle Little Star, and wrote an I Love You song to her son. It was, the words didn't quite rhyme, it, you know, the song didn't stay on tune, but as she sang it, tears welled up in her eyes, and she just said, I love this song. I sing this song to my son all the time. It's our song. And those are the kind of things you can do. I remember my dad coming in to wake me up in the morning singing his song to me. And, and at, the, at the time, I couldn't stand it. But now I look back and think, wow, what a better way than coming in and yelling at me, trying to get me out of bed. And so those are the kind of things that creating a song with your child, letting it be their song that they write to help them get ready, to help them clean up, to help them brush their teeth, to have I love you is very memorable. So use this. Now, as you saw, we did use the learning triangle. We actually viewed a clip that has a jingle in it. We read the book, The Sills on the Bus, and then you guys did an activity. That's how you can bring it all together with your kids also. Another attribute that music has is movement. From the time your child is born, or maybe even before it's born, how many of you start rocking back and forth, back and forth? I know that as my children have grown and left the house, I still find myself, as I look at a new mom, start to rock. <laughs> but movement is one th um, thing that we do from the very, very time they're born. We use that to soothe them. We use that to entertain them, and they use it themselves. Uh, my granddaughter, who I'm very partial to, we just love to even if there's just uh, music on a commercial, she'll stop what she's doing and then just starts dancing, moving, bopping her head, going up and down. And one thing that we know about music is it develops the gross motor skills. And as children get older, we want them, to, we want to make sure that they're able to move during certain times of their life, that they can move when they hear music. As you watch this clip of Caillou, it's very age appropriate for a four-year-old that as they listen to the music, that they reach for the high notes and then go down for the low notes. As you watch this, you'll notice that the notes that are in between, they really don't listen to. It's the high, high and the low, low. That's very normal. With your kids, put on music and see, how does this music make you feel? How would this music make you feel if it was snowing? Those kind of things. How would it, we, if we did it really low or we did it really high? What if we just moved our hands or just moved our feet? There's different ways that you can do that with your children to help them move. Another thing that I have learned and I've seen with children is when children can learn to control their bodies, it's the 
first step, and remember the first step of learning to control their emotions. So when we help them learn to stop and go with music and move to music, they also will be able to learn to control their emotions and their anger and their jealousy, but not until they learn to control their body. So movement seems very natural for children, but it also has a great advantage for you to help them with emotional development too. Now, um, the book that I love that's all about movement is called Saturday Night at the Dinosaur Stomp. Now, this book is a little hard to read and it takes a little bit of practice, but it's got a lot of movement in it. Word went out across the prehistoric slime. Hey, dinosaurs, it's rock and roll time. Slick back your scales and get ready to romp on Saturday night at the Dinosaur Stomp. By the lava beds and the tar pit shore, on the mountaintop and the rainforest floor, dinosaurs scrubbed their necks and nails. They brushed their teeth and curled their tails. Then ready, set, go. They trampled and tromped. Dinosaurs giggled and shuffled and stared, ready to party, but a little bit scared. The Iguanodon shouted, one, two, three, started up the band by waving a tree. Brachio, Super, and Ultrasaurus sang doobop a loobop, all in a chorus. Ankylosaurus drummed on his hard-shelled back, boomalaka, boomalaka, whack, whack, whack. Pentaceratops stood up to perform and blasted a tune on his favorite horn. They played in rhythm, they sang in rhyme, Dinosaur music in dinosaur time. Duckbill thought he'd take a chance. Asked Dallasaurus if she'd like to dance. Tarchia winked at a stegosaur she liked. They danced together, spike to spike. The Triassic twist and the Brontosaurus bump. The Raptor rap and Jurassic jump. Tyrannosaurus rex led a conga line. Carnosaurs capered close behind. They rocked and rolled, they twirled and tromped. There never was a party like the dinosaur stomp. The nighttime sky began to glow. Volcanoes put on a fireworks show. The ground was rocking, it started to shake. Those dinosaurs danced up the first earthquake. The party went on, it was so outrageous. They stayed up well past the late Cretaceous. When the Cenozoic dawned, they were tired and beat. They yawned, big yawns, and put up their feet. And they're still asleep, snoring deep in the swamp. Oh, but they'll be back next dinosaur stomp. Isn't that a fun book? I love this book because boys like it. And if you talk about dancing with boys, it's not going to happen. But if you talk about moving with boys, you're going to have a lot better um, activity. In this book, though, there's a lot of movements your kids could do. The Jurassic twist, twisting their hand, twisting their leg, twisting their hip, a lot of the brontosaurus bump, bumping. Find music that probably has a big, steady, deep beat that you could do. Now there's some of you thinking, I don't know any steps. I don't know any dance steps. I don't know how to move. Well, right in front of you, we have some Priscilla dance cards. And it just has very, very simple movement steps that you can do with your children and that they can take one, make up their own dance. Once again, put on different music to see how it makes them feel and how it makes them move. Remember, we're practicing gross motor skills when we're moving. And that's one thing that really helps children with their brain development is when they're moving too. So moving is important. Sometimes we think kids need to be sitting down and um, being still, but actually when they're moving, they're learning. So encourage that with music. We just got finished talking about movement. We're gonna talk about rhythm. How is rhythm different from movement, Rachel? How is there any um, difference? Movement seems more like it's just like you're moving your body, but rhythm, you have an actual set rhythm that you're moving your body to a specific rhythm. Okay, or pattern. pattern, so a pattern. So each of you in front of you actually have some rhythm sticks. Now, if a child saw these, of course, they would think that they were swords or some type of weapon, but today we're going to use them as a rhythm stick. And it's like Rachel said, that um, 
um, that rhythm is very different from movement because it has a set pattern. So if we did a pattern of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now let's do that pattern, but on the second beat, let's do a rest. Oops, messed up there. <laughs> okay, um, when we talk about literacy in rhythm, let's think of syllables. My name is Stephanie. I have nine letters in my name, but let's see how many syllables. Stephanie, how many? Okay, Teresa, how many letters do you have in your name? Seven. Seven, and I have nine, but how many syllables the same? Four. Okay, Teresa, Teresa, Tori, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that even the beat, the heavy beat of that, and Rachel's right, rhythm is different because it has a set pattern. When children are able to learn rhythm, as we talked about in our nursery rhyme workshop, they're able to start to learn the basics of math. And we know that there's research after research that shows that children that play a musical instrument that know music do better in math than children that do not. Now, if many of you probably play an instrument, you fought with your parents not to, and you probably thought, oh, it didn't really help me in math. But actually, it doesn't just help you in math. It helps you in reading because you have to read those notes, read the music, and those kind of things. So any kind of music is very good for children. Now, my favorite book with this is called Rap-A-Tap-Tap. -tap. Think of that. And um, as I've gone out to schools and I've been asked to read books, I usually take this one. And I think that when I walk in and I have music sticks for all the kids, the teachers just sort of shake their head at me. Oh, like, oh, no. And so what we do is we make sure we get on our, and we beat at the desks as much as we can. We get out all the jiggles. And then we start. And you guys are going to start to be my tap shoes because Bojangos is a famous, a true, Bill Robison is a famous um, tap dancer, but it's rap-a-tap-tap, -tap, think of that, and I'm going to show you the rhythm we would like to do. There once was a man who danced in the street, and then I want you to get your rhythm sticks, and either put them, um, either you can do, if you're very coordinated, rap-a-tap-tap, -tap, think of that, or rap-a-tap-tap. -tap. Think of that, whichever you prefer. But it's going to be that rap a tap tap. Think of that. I'll read that page. It's every other page we say that. I'll read it once or twice, and then you guys are just going to be my tap shoes. There once was a man who danced in the streets. Rap a tap tap. Think of that. He brought pleasure and joy to the people he'd greet. Rap a tap tap. Think of that. He didn't just dance, he made art with his feet. He danced past doors, some were open, some were closed. He danced past folks in fancy clothes. He danced through places people called the skids. He danced through crowds of laughing kids. His feet fairly flew as he tipped his hat. He briefly paused to pat an old cat. He danced rain or shine in all kinds of weather. People listened each day for his toe tapping clatter. He danced many rhythms that were seldom the same. Dance was his passion and it brought him fame. Bojangles, Bojangles, that was his name. Okay, Bill Robison lived in 19, um, 1878 through 1949, and he was the greatest tap dancer, and so this book is actually for him. And I didn't know this until I got this book, but May 25th is considered National Tap Dance Day. So if you guys in May can tap dance. But there's a lot of different books where you have that rhythm that children can find it. Remember that when a child knows rhythm, they know patterns and it will eventually help them with math and reading skills as they practice it.
The next thing we're going to talk about is musical instruments. I know at my house that my pots and pans became musical instruments and all the little things that you can use to bang and drum, those are the musical instruments. And we're going to talk about musical instruments and how you can make them with um, just things at home and also how you can use them when you read a book to make it a little more interesting. So I'm going to show you a couple things that you can use. Um, these are getting harder and harder to find, <laughs> the little film canisters, but you can put all kinds of things in it. I think this one actually has a bell, a couple bells in it, but the more you put in, does the sound get louder or softer? Melanie, what would you think? Softer because there's not as much room to for the objects to move. Okay, volume right there. We're teaching our children about volume. Depending what you put in there, rice or beans or M and M's are a really good thing. Now I'm going to tell you when you get these, if you do put rice in them, then you might want to go around and seal them somehow, tape them. Rice in a car is hard to vacuum out, but popcorn, different things that you can do. Now, if we put it in the same um, item in a paper plate, more volume, a louder so sound. And so, you, once again, you talk about the volume or the area that just um, different um, sounds make using a mus musical instrument. Um, we have a fun book that I'm not going to read today, but um, the book Honey, Honey, Lion has nothing about music. In fact, it's about sharing and getting along. But on her website, on Jan Brett's website, we found where you take all the different sounds that you use in the book, like sprong and different sounds, the swish, swish, and you can actually make your musical band while you read the book. You can follow along with a clickety click and just finding very simple things at home and the pictures that come with uh, on her website actually then you know which sound you're going to do a really fun activity using your own mus musical instruments that you can make at home um, i'm going to take the book um, click cl um, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, and we're going to actually make it become a band. Now, some of you are going to be the coconut tree, and that's the three of you are going to take your bells, and you're going to, every time I say coconut tree, you're going to just do coconut tree with the bells, okay? So why don't you practice coconut tree? And then we're going to have you guys be my Chicka Chicka, okay? So Chicka Chicka. So chicka chicka, and then in the back, you're gonna be with your music sticks, the boom boom. And you want to do that as loud as you possibly can. This book, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, is normally read as an ABC book, but we're gonna actually make it a band. Now, all of you know your parts. We've got the coconut tree, let's practice. Coconut tree, and then the chicka chicka. Chicka chicka. Now that's pretty loud. And then our the loudest we want is our boom boom. Great, great. Okay. So now in this book, I want you to think. What do you think the word that we use the most is? Chicka chicka boom boom. That's the title of the book. Maybe, maybe it's another one. But as you hear your word, make sure to play your instrument. Chicka chicka boom boom. A told B and B told C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. We said D to E F G. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. Will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. And Q R S and T U V. Still more W X Y Z. The whole alphabet up the Oh no! Chicka chicka boom boom! Skit scat scoodle dip flip flop flea! Everybody's running to the coconut tree! Mamas and papas and uncles and aunts, they hug their little dears and they dust their pants! Help us up! cried ABC! Next from the piled up skinny D and stub toed E and patched up F. And here comes G all out of breath. H is tangled up with I and J and K are about to cry. L is knotted like a tie. 
N is looped, and N is stooped, and O is twisted, alley oop, skit scat scoodle doop, flip flop flea. Look who's coming! It's Black Eyed P and Q R S and loose tooth T and U V W wiggle jiggle free. And the last to come is X Y Z. And the sun goes down on the coconut tree. But chicka chicka boom boom, look there's a full moon. A is out of bed, and this is what he said. Dare double dare, you can't catch me. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. Okay, which word did we use the most? The coconut tree by far was the most. You can just take your very simple instruments, take a simple book, use it to make those um, educational, fun, fun moments. As we've talked about music during this workshop, we've seen how music can take something memorable and make it something that you can remember new information. We've talked about how that movement comes very naturally for children and using that to help them um, develop their gross and their fine motor skills. We've talked about rhythm, how it will help them in the future learn math and patterns. And then we've talked about taking just everyday items at home and making musical instruments, reading a book, making a band, having lots of fun with music. Because while music is educational, it's probably one of the most fun things that you can do with your family.